Well, we're here in a break on, I guess it's the 23rd of, uh, of July 2012, the World Intellectual Property Organization's Standing Committee on Copyright and Related Rights, uh, the SSCR 24, and I'm here with Tim Padfield. Padfield. And Tim Padfield is here with the, uh, is with the CIA, and so I'm wondering, <laughs> Tim, if you can explain a little bit about it. introduce yourself to the listeners as to, as to who you are and what the CIA is and, uh, and, and why you're here this week at WIPO. The CIA has nothing to do with an American organization. It's the Conseil International des Archives, that's the International Council on Archives. And I'm here representing the archives community seeking uh, a treaty on libraries and archive exceptions to copyright for libraries and archives. So uh, uh, the sort of things that we're looking for, so far as archives are concerned, um, are provisions that would allow copying by archives for preservation purposes so as to enable uh, all sorts of unpublished works to be copied um, and preserved so that if they are decaying or if they are in digital form, for example, they can be copied so as to ensure that there is a copy available for users. Um, and the other principal purpose for archives is to enable copying for the purposes of users so that uh, researchers can take copies away from an archive and use those copies for their research. Tim, do you, do you work yourself as an archivist? Yes, I work at the National, Account, National Archives in Kew in London. And uh, why is it that uh, WIPO or the world, you know, why would the UN have to get involved in this problem? Primarily because uh, many of our readers, our, our researchers, live overseas and so we are needing to provide copies to other countries. Um, copyright is a, is a national, on the whole, a national uh, system. Um, so we need to be able to ensure that when we have supply a copy under UK law, it will be legitimately transferred to another country. So is this, pri is this primarily about addressing the cross-border exchange of information that is managed by archivists? It is to a large extent, yes. And is there much of a problem in terms of the national laws? Are all the national laws you know, reasonably good on these issues? There's but huge variety in national laws. Um, there are lo lots of national laws which don't say anything at all about archives. Um, and so you, um, archivists have to rely on general exceptions to copyright. There are other national laws which have d very detailed provisions for archives, including the UK one. Um, but there is a lot of variety. So are you, are you trying to do it, uh, you know, it's part of your initiative to establish stronger, harmonized norms about what the exceptions are in archives? Or is it focused? That's right. And, and, and uh, I was going to say, or and or is what I, I meant to say, uh, deal with the cross-border issue. I suppose we're, we're looking for both, yes, um, in, in order to ensure that people understand what, what, is, what is allowed for archives across the world. And c can you address the cross-border issue without dealing with the harmonization of domestic exceptions issue? Harmonization of domestic exceptions? Well, what I mean is that you're, if you're seeking a certain amount of harmonization of the domestic exceptions, uh, which you said is part of it, uh, you need both that and the, and the cross-border. Are you, you know, you said you're trying to get WIPO to focus on both. This comes up in the bli on the Treaty for the Blind. Some people say, do you need do you need some minimum exceptions for people who are blind everywhere, or do you need the cross borders you know situation solver? Like which you know sometimes they'll say which is more more important to you the the, the, the solving the cross border issue or solving the lack of exceptions in some countries? And I'm wondering if in archives how that plays out. I I, I would say that for for the for the most part. Um, the cross-border issue is is the, is the, is the big difficulty. It's, it's the reason why you need international agreement. But having harmonisation would make life a great deal more simple for archivists, so they understand what is allowed, and so that researchers across the world understand what is allowed. Do you, you know, I, I don't know if you're a lawyer or not, or if you study the technical issues of the uh, copyright law very much, but. One of the debates here is to what extent um, and, 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 and how are exceptions regulated by the, uh, uh, the three-step test that's found 
in the reproduction right in burn or in the uh, in the trips agreement is that something that you've you've spent much time thinking about in this negotiation um, I'm certain I'm not a lawyer but I have I've written a book on copyright for for archivists in the UK um, and so I've studied the subject a lot I would say on the whole that the three-step te test is is not a problem for archives because archival copying tends to be of unpublished materials in which there is no um, particular a commercial interest, there is no damage to rights owners by the use of archival materials. Well, that's uh, very, very, really uh, helpful for me in terms of understanding the issue. Is there anything you'd like to add before we conclude the interview? No, I don't think so. Thank you.